This morning, Stephanie Wilder Taylor, former stand up comic turned television producer, turned author. Her irreverent books on parenting, Sippy Cups Are Not for Chardonnay, and Nap Time is the New Happy Hour were both bestsellers, celebrating mommy wine culture and playdate cocktail parties. Then something changed. She began putting herself in danger. She put her kids in danger. So Fun Mom sobered up. Wilder Taylor writes about all of it in her new book, Drunkish. I remember going to parties like pretty much every weekend. Stephanie Wilder Taylor has never had a problem being the life of the party, especially when she started drinking at the age of 14. When I drank the very first time, I'd never kissed a boy before, and I was on this double date with my friend, and they brought some beer, and I remember having a couple beers and feeling like, oh my God, like, I could do anything. And it gave me this good feeling of like, oh, I think I could do this. And you did. that's a powerful feeling, yes, and then I had my first kiss. <laughs> her drinking over the years accelerated, along with her career. All right, let's do this. From stand-up comedy, Show me the funny. to working on TV game shows, Wilder Taylor was a blast. In her late 30s, she became a mom. Alcohol had always been a part of my life and always, I always thought of it as fun. And when I had a baby, a lot of my entertainment options didn't seem open to me anymore. And I felt this anxiety all the time of like, oh my gosh, my life is so different. I don't get to see my friends. A lot of my friends were stand-up comedians who were still going out every night. And I think that I turned a little bit back to drinking as a way to A, cope. I was having postpartum anxiety. Having a baby though, it is a little stressful. So I have, I've gone into therapy. You know, it wasn't that I was feeling trapped. It was just that I was feeling very, um, lack of freedom. I'm not sure I'm seeing results. It's, it's aromatherapy and um... Did you get a sense from other moms that they felt similar? That, that well that's trapped, the theme. Lack of freedom? So I started a blog and I realized quickly that a lot of moms out there in the blogosphere were talking about their wine. Her blog became a best-selling book. Sippy cups are not for Chardonnay. I actually wanted to call it Sippy Cups or Not for Scotch because it's such an emergency drink, but then I thought, <laughs> you know. That was followed by Nap Time is the new happy hour. When you look back on those books, mm -hmm. do you feel bad? No, I don't. Wilder Taylor says she wasn't telling people to drink and she wasn't offering recipes, but she was, as the books continued to sell, thinking privately about how much she was consuming herself usually convincing herself she was fine. Like when she drove her kids to one particular party. The day that changed everything. I always think I've had two drinks, even when I've had six drinks. I'm like, I'm on my second drink. So my brain told me that I was totally fine to drive. I got in the car, I had my four-year-old and my one of my toddlers with me, and I drove home, and it was a short drive but when I got home, my husband was absolutely furious. He knew I'd been drinking. In that moment, I still honestly was like, I was fine, What? he is so overreacting, this is ridiculous. But I woke up in the morning and I realized that my even my memory of the night was spotty. And so I knew 100% that I'd gotten drunk and I'd driven my kids in the car. And I saw the whole thing and I was so like ashamed and there was just no other way to look at it. There was no other way to see the way I drank. I was like, I'm not safe when I drink, I'm not predictable. Mm -hmm. And so I have to do something different. Like I cannot drink again and I have to do whatever it takes. And that was it? That's the last time I drank, yeah. May 22nd, 2009. Quitting drinking got some attention at the time but Wilder Taylor never wrote the whole story until now. Prompted not just by what she'd done to help herself, but what she could potentially do to help others. Yeah. And I'm constantly catastrophizing and then going, okay, what's worst case scenario? I found that 
every time addiction or talking about quitting drinking or sobriety came up in my podcast, I'd get people saying, it helps me so much when you talk about this. You know, it helps me, um, it, it destigmatizes it for me. It helps me feel more normal that I'm struggling with this or it helps me take a look at it or all these things. And I just, it started occurring to me, wouldn't it be great if I could do like sippy cups are not for Chardonnay, but for like my sobriety. Drunkish is both funny and scary, but not, and this was important to her, preachy. I think one of the helpful things you do in the book is not offer a prescription. Mm -hmm. It's like your attitude is do what works for you. Yeah. Now that doesn't mean be destructive. Right. But you know what I'm saying? I think there's not one way, if people are wondering if they drink too much, like I'm not, I can't tell somebody. I mean, I get asked all the time, you know, how do I know if I have a drinking problem? I don't, I don't know. It's like, that's something that you have to figure out for yourself, but. But if you're asking me that question. Yeah. You may want to think about it. Right. If you're spending mental energy worrying about how much you drink, that's definitely something to take a look at. And I would, I would encourage anybody to just examine it. When you feel uncomfortable now, mm -hmm. what do you do? Usually call somebody and talk about it or do something to distract myself or do other things that are seem addictive, like play games on my phone, or I just try to zone out in some way watch TV. I still have lots of unhealthy habits. She does these podcasts now where she talks about all of this, you know, mm -hmm. frequently or, or whatever's on her mind. You may agree or disagree with it, but she's doing it now with a clear head. I noticed that she didn't use the word alcoholic. I mean, is, does she consider herself addicted to alcohol in that way? She talks about a lot of that in the book. I mean, I think you have to read it to fully appreciate how she feels about all this. But, you know, she, as she talks about, she gets, she's gotten support from friends, from people she's spoken with. As she says, when she feels weird now, she'll pick up the phone and call somebody. And I think her, the idea that it, people were getting help from it is an amazing thing of people that will read and get help from it. You just 100%. don't realize the reach that you can have. Absolutely. Kudos to her. Yeah, really nice piece, Jeff.